the Canfield Fairgrounds. A killing field to the men and machines of the MTRA. Today, we'll see who avoids a dusting and who lays claim to this monstrous militarized zone. This is Trucks and Tractor Power featuring the all-stars of the Penda Monster Truck Thunder Drag Series. Today, it's the Penda Monster Truck Thunder Drags from the Canfield Fairgrounds in Canfield, Ohio. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the National Network. This is our second visit to this racing facility. As you can see from the opening, this track can really serve up the mayhem. Actually, it's a pulling track, so these monster trucks with the huge tires really kick up the dirt. In fact, it almost looks like a bomb going off. Well, over trackside right now is my colleague, Army Armstrong, and he is surveying the conditions of today's battlefield. Lane choice at Canfield, Ohio, Gary Lee. It'll be the kiss of death if you're not on your toes. The left lane at Canfield historically has provided some of the wildest action we've ever seen in monster truck racing. We have literally seen them flip, flop, and fly out of that left lane. Now, the right lane is unique in itself because there's a little bit of a hill off the right side of the right lane. That would seem to intimidate a lot of the monster truck drivers, but until today, it did not intimidate the drivers. However, after the first round session, the Hall brothers have proven that right lane can rear up and bite you big time. So right now, the question is not left or right lane, but which is the best lane? Gary? Well, Army, here's what you're talking about. Now, this is Mark Hall in the executioner. This is in qualifying. He is in the right lane. Watch what happened. About three foot off the edge of the track, there's a little downgrade. Right there, you see the right rear tire catch it. Hooks are rut. There's our flip flopping and flying. Like a sprint already. car catching the cushion and going on over. Big Take time. a look again. Now watch at the end of the run. Watch his right rear. It rolls over. See, and you only run about four pounds of air in these tires. And when you get it over just right there, the tire will collapse. And you go on your lid. A lot of body damage, but Mark was uninjured. Also in qualifying, Andy Brass will have the fast time in Wildfoot. Here is his run. Worked out of the left lane. The truck does what it's supposed to do. Look how soft it lands. Brass goes to the head of the class as far as qualifying goes. Now we move to round one. This is big John Moore and no problem. And he goes up against Ken Deppy driving barefoot for Fred Schaefer. Deppy, the new kid on the block, if you will, takes the win. Moore dodges that right lane angle. He won't be back, Deppie will. Alan Tura in Goliath, and there is uh, Kirk Dabney in USA 1. Of course, Tura has some uh, less than fond memories of this joint, but today's visit would be short and uh, not so sweet. There's a look at Mark Hall, who would get the executioner ready for round one, where he would meet up with Don Van Loo. Now, Van Loo was another guy who had a, a rough run in qualifying there in the near lane. Yeah, in his qualifying session, the truck hit so hard, if you look at the bottom of it, between the front wheels, he actually tore the hydraulic lines up. So, Hall and Van Lue will be the battle of the walking wounded in that first round. Well, Hall got the truck back together, but was not much of a factor here. Van Lue takes the Chrysler Hemi engine, rolls over to the next round, but Hall did get that next run under his belt. And after flipping, Gary, you know that's important to get the confidence back in your truck. Also a highlight from round one and a mismatch, Rick Rattler driving the snake bite in the near lane, taking on a Ford Leaf Spring truck called Night Stalker, driven by Steve Combs who didn't offer the snake much of a fight. We're coming back to Canfield with round two. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Canfield, Ohio Fairgrounds for the Penda Monster Truck Thunder Drags. Now, earlier, Army Armstrong took a look at how a monster truck driver actually sees the track from what might be called the highest seat in racing. A lot of people wonder when the monster trucks go to the starting line, why they actually roll up and touch the first jump, why the drivers run up and bump what they're going to be jumping. Well, it's the same principle as you and I getting up in a dark room in the middle of the night. We have to take our hand and actually touch out to develop a field of depth, okay? That's exactly what the monster truck drivers are doing. So the best way we can show you how to do that is to actually put you in the driver's seat nine feet, six inches up in the air, and I'm going to go to the front bumper where the starting line would normally be. So you get in the seat, I'm going to the front. 
Now, right now, I'm standing on the downside of the first ramp. You're set nine feet, six inches in the air with the helmet with very poor peripheral vision. I'm walking to you towards the starting line. I'm walking over the first set of jump cars. If you'll notice, you can't even see these cars that I'm negotiating right now, and there's another set on the other end of the track. So at this point in time, with your vision and your field of vision, what you're doing is not worrying about what's on the ground, but you're looking past the finish line at some spot that you've picked out on the end of the track. And you're actually driving the vehicle, pointing it at that spot. The jumps themselves, they're just obstacles between you and the spot. So at this point in time, what you're doing basically is picking your spot and taking your best shot. Well, in round two matchups with a 10-truck field, we have quick losers in both the first and second rounds. Now, Gene Patterson went up against Andy Brass. That's a matchup that we've seen many times before. They actually met in round one. Bigfoot was the fast loser. He comes back. Then it's USA 1 against Snakebite, and Magnum Force will take on Barefoot. So there are the matchups now for round two here in Canfield, Ohio. Once again, a pair of Fords out of St. Louis, Missouri, Bigfoot, and Wildfoot, Andy Brass, in the latest creation of Bob and Marilyn Chandler in the far lane. And there's a look at Andy Brass from St. Louis. And he'll be taking on uh, his old buddy, Gene Patterson, in his old truck, Bigfoot. I don't know about this old buddy thing. They've already bumped heads once earlier today. This is that race. Yeah, this was back in round one. Now, once again, the 10 truck field, the fast loser comes back. So Wildfoot with Andy Brass victorious, but Gene Patterson and Bigfoot was the fast loser. So they have a chance to come back and run each other a second time. And I like that rule because what it does, it keeps racing in front of the fans. And also it gives incentive to the guy that you may get beat, but as long as you run hard through the back door, you might be coming back. Point in hand, Patterson and Bigfoot. Pair of Fords out of St. Louis. Oh, look at this, even closer. In... You call it. I don't, you I can't. Call I it. can't, Army. I can't call it. That was almost a dead heat. Andy Brass's time is 5.26. We'll take a look now at the time for Gene Patterson, a 5.30. So by an eyelash, Wildfoot advances. We take a look again at that run, and I, I really think that Bigfoot could come back again as the fast loser. Here's the winner, Andy Brass. Andy, a unique situation. Even though you guys keep beating on each other, you're still trying to bring one of you back into a loser bracket as quick loser of that round. So really, you guys can still go against each other and each other in the next round. Yeah, that's right. You know, we kind of got a bad draw here on early on in the bracket, and we had to face each other early. And now all we're doing is coming back as fast loser. They got the fast loser up in the top bracket, and it's, it seems like all we're going to do today is just pretty well race herself. We got to keep our times up so we keep coming back as fast losers so we still staying in the brackets. Andy, you keep getting lane choice by virtue of having the quick time. Why do you go to the left side of the track? Well, one of the reasons I like the left side is I think it's a little easier for me to see the lights. You know, and we're trying to pull a good light here, and that's a big thing. All in this whole bracket of racing, everybody's running so close that the lights are going to be a big, big part in this program this year. And there's a look at Rick Rattler in Snake Fight, and behind that you saw the USA truck owned by Everett Jasmer, driven today by Kirk Dabney. Now, Kirk is out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, but the truck itself comes from Ham Lake, Minnesota. You know, we, we're starting to see appearances of this truck on the circuit. A lot of people ask about it. Dabney's teamed up with uh, Everett, like you say, but nobody's really making a 100% commitment to bring that truck back on the circuit, in my opinion. Meanwhile, this kid is the second driver in the line of the snake bike truck, Rick Rattler. They're teaming up making horsepower. We found out the crew members there or they call them the rabbit and the honker and they're in charge of the research and development and this kid's coming up as a second driver he could be the future of the sport now, once again this is round two action from canfield ohio it's all snake bite i'll tell you one thing the old rabbit and the honker are flat making a horsepower and this kid he's a driver gary lee yeah rick rattler's getting the horsepower down a good ride there are the uh, times for both dabney and the rattler as dabney goes back to the trailer and the Rattler will advance as we take another look. Oh, look at him yeah. coming out of the gate. We look at him. The Pick water. the yeah. front end up. A great ride. Let's go down trackside and talk to Rick Rattler. Rick, USA 1 normally uh, can kind of intimidate people. It doesn't seem like anybody bothers you out there. No, nobody really has today, Army. You know, we had a, a real good race there against USA 1. He got me out of the hole, but the Ford Snake Bite's really running well. We've been running right lane all day. And the truck seems to be carrying the front tires over the first set of cars and just been doing an outstanding job of going straight in that lane. And I, you know, I really want to come back in that lane. 
Well, Army, as we wrap up round two competition, there's a look at Don Van Lu, Magnum Force, the near lane, the far lane, barefoot, driven today by Ken Deppy. You know, this is almost a worst case scenario. These people with this BF Goodrich series try to bring the best monster trucks in the country out, and they do. But look here, you got Dodge against Dodge. That's the way it worked out, though. Yeah, well, no, that's why you qualify and everything, but you know. Well, I see Dodge Ford, so on and so forth. Dodge Chevy, Chevy Ford. Yeah, I know. That's the way it worked out from qualifying. That's our matchup. So let's see which Dodge will advance. Don Van Lu against Ken Deppy. Van Magnum Lu Force against Barefoot. Van Lu's motor's to the rear of the truck. Deppy's in the front. Right now, I'd want my motor to front. Well, you? right now, yeah. it's all Barefoot. As Don Van Lu, we saw he had trouble earlier. He limps across the line. Ken Deppy advances with that time you saw there on the screen, and the Magnum Force will go back to the trailer. Once again, looking right into the eyes, into the cockpit, a barefoot. Looking right down the barrel of that old rascal, aren't you? Well, look at that. Those guys are really working up in there. Not a real smooth ride, no, fast, but not that. real smooth. Well, let's go down now and talk to Ken Deppy. Ken, you get this far in the program, nothing is easy out there, is it? Uh, it seems like we get bad brakes all the time. We've had a uh, couple limiter cables break on the front, and we've had to fix them between rounds. Really pushed us hard for time, but the truck's running real good. Uh, I think we got a chance at it today. Make any difference what lane you go in? I think the left's the best, but you know I don't know if there's that much difference in them. I've been running the left all day, and, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I want to tell you something. I just asked the same question to the guy you're going against. He wants the right, so both of you are going to be happy campers if that's the way it goes down. Well, I can live with that, Army. Well, that will do it for round two competition. But before we get to the semis, a little action from the BF Goodrich Tough Truck Competition. Watch this. Welcome back to the Canfield Fairgrounds in Canfield, Ohio for the Penda Monster Truck Thunder Drags. Gary Lee along with Army Armstrong. We are ready for the uh, semifinal matchups. As Wildfoot takes on Bigfoot, the fast loser, snake bite against Barefoot. It could be a Ford ambush, three Fords, and one Dodge. Yeah, but the rest of the story is one of the Fords keeps coming back. That's the Bigfoot Ford through that quick loser bracket. Sanction body, good move. It keeps them racing hard. Well, you'll recall after his second round run, Ken Deffy was talking about some suspension problems on the Dodge Barefoot. Army has this follow-up. Barefoot was talking about problems they have with their limiter cable, so I thought I'd show you what it is and what it's for. It's this cable right here. And what it does, it keeps the shock absorber from coming apart. The shock absorber is designed to stretch out. But this cable, once the shock absorber goes to maximum length, it actually stops it from going any further and keeps the shock together. Now, this particular vehicle has two shocks. Each shock's $1,500. So if this cable were to snap or malfunction and the front end stretch all the way out, you're going to lose $3,000 worth of shock absorbers instantly. Cheap cable that does a rather expensive job. All right, we are ready now for side-by-side -side action. The semis, far lane, barefoot, the Dodge, near lane, the Ford, snake bite, Rattler against Deppy. New kid on the block in the far lane. New kid on the block this lane. The future of the sport, that's what we're looking at. Boy, wheels up start for snake bite. Deppy's trying to muscle him on the other end. Oh, which was it? Almost a dead heat. Who won that one, Army? Man, I don't have any idea. Well, let's check the times. Deppy's a 526. 525. You can't get any closer than that. Oh, oh. man, oh, man. By the eyelash. That's what I like. The, the sports keep going and growing. Here's two new drivers, OK? driving good equipment. Their mentors are back building better equipment. Yeah, and let's talk to what has to be a happy Rick Rattler. Boy, you just took one of the heavy hitters out of this game. Yeah, we knocked the Dodge out with the Ford snake bite. You know, we bit him pretty tough, and I don't think, you know, this weekend's gonna be a good weekend for the Dodges, but all in all, we're out to see who wins in the finals. It's gonna be a good weekend for the Fords because they're gonna be right there. There's one of them, Wildfoot with Andy Brass, and there is the front of a, well, a two-time fast loser, but right here he is, the semis. That is a Bigfoot with Gene Patterson. This is called a deja vu round. We've seen <laughs> this one before, two, but. Two yeah. deja vus today. But that you don't race behind you. You race in front of you. Those things behind us just got him to this point. He can still, Gene Patterson, when I say he can still be a player, and, you know, maybe he's learned something these previous two rounds. We have seen how close these two rounds have been. Now, can Wildfoot beat Bigfoot three times in one afternoon. 
Would that be called a hat trick in this sport, Gary Lee? I mean, the trifecta. I don't know that Bigfoot has ever been beaten three times. Let's see a third time's that. charm. I believe it is. I think Foot got him. I don't know. It's mighty close. I, I think, think you're right. Low, oh, hang low. on there. Gene almost drove around to the paddock right there. Uh, we don't have a paddock in this sport. It's called a driveway. Brass goes a 5-18. That rolls him over. But let's see. Bingo! Yes. All Gene right. Patterson has taken out Wildfoot. Let's look one more time. Third time charm in Canfield for the big, bad blue truck. Patterson kept coming back as the fast loser round one, round two, and he takes out Wildfoot. Let's look again. Remember the old rock and roll song, Devil with the Blue Dress On? Well, she's dancing right now. <laughs> and she'll be dancing in, in the, the finals final. here That's at right. Canfield as Gene Patterson knocks out Andy Braz. So. And scares the security guard. Yeah, well, our remote truck's there. parked yeah. right behind that fence there. That was very close. Now we'll go down and talk to Gene Patterson as he climbs out. Well, I tell you what, uh, you just seem to be on a good roll today. Andy, you know, he bumped you twice, but you didn't let it bother you. You just kind of ran your race, and you're going to the final. That's right, Army. You know, the Ford Bigfoot team, we're working real hard this weekend. You know, both these trucks are running real good. Uh, we got another Ford, it seems like, down in the bottom part of the bracket. That'd be that snake bite truck. You know, these Fords are working good here this weekend. We're real tickled to death. Wise Coat Pistons right here in Ohio. Got a little bit of extra boost in the motor on it. You know, we're just doing fine. We're really, we're really tickled. Three times a charm, you know. Indeed, third time's a charm. Gene Patterson, the Ford Bigfoot in the finals against the Ford Snake Fight and Rick Rattler all coming your way from Canfield. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Canfield Fairgrounds here in Canfield, Ohio for the Penda Monster Truck Thunder Drags. Now, this event is brought to you by the same people who put on the four-wheel and off-road jamborees, and they offer a host of participant and spectator activities, as well as great mud and monster truck racing you see right here on this program. Time now for the finals, a classic shootout, the matchup between the Ford Snakebite and the Ford Bigfoot. Now, these two have seen a lot of each other this weekend. In fact, the same two trucks met in the finals earlier. Last night, on the first day of the Canfield stop, it was all Gene Patterson, as Rick Rattler had some engine problems. But back to today's finals, earlier, Army had a chance to visit with both the drivers in today's championship shootout. Gary, going into the final, you know there's some pressure, but Gene Patterson, the guy going to be sitting in the other lane from you, built his truck just to beat you. Is that any more pressure? Yeah, you know, Army, Snake's been running real good this weekend. He's taken us out a couple of times and a couple of other races. There's a lot of pressure on us, but as the old saying goes, it's going to take a Ford to beat a Ford in the finals here this weekend. We've been talking about the Dodge and Ford rivalry all year long. Well, this guy stopped the Dodge end of it today. It's going to be an all-Ford final. Yeah, it is, Army. You know, the, the Ford snake bite's really been running well today, and I'm glad it is an all-Ford final. The Ford's been running tough this whole weekend, and I guess what I really want to say is the crew's been doing a real good job of keeping the truck running. I really feel confident in the motor, the transmission. You know, we're getting good traction off the line thanks to Firestone, but it all goes to show Fords are the best. All right, here they are for the finals. Snake bite, the far lane. Bigfoot, the near lane. Crew members side by side, the drama's up. We told you the story. They contacted the group they call Rabbit and a Hawker about the horsepower, and they told them what to do. It's put them in the final. Let's see what's going to happen now. Ironically, look at the lane Bigfoot decided to choose. He's got over to the lane that not a lot of people want to mess with because of that little downgrade. But Patterson's comfortable in it, Gary. All right, they are staged. There is the light. They are underway, and it's oh. going to be Gene Patterson. Whoa, what a look. Can you believe it? Twice he came back as the fast loser, then knocked out Wildfoot and Andy Brass, makes it to the finals, and then knocks out Snakebite. Rick Rattler. Goes, yeah, a 528, a strong, strong run, making all kind of horsepower. Patterson, a 520, but that ought to tell the youngsters out there something. You don't quit. Patterson believed in himself. He believed in the crew. He knew he could keep working his way back in, and that's exactly what he did. That's a good plastic He race. also got faster with each run. And there is a look at your winner as he unbuckles, about to climb out of Bigfoot Army. Go over there and catch up with Gene Patterson. Tell you what, Gene, that was like a gunfight out there. Both of you came off that line like a rocket. 
Yeah, you know, I've been watching Snakebite run all day long, and it seems like he's really getting out of the hole real fast, you know, Ford Bigfoot. We were going to make a gear change for the final, but we were real safe with the gears we've been running after we beat the Wildfoot truck. We felt real good about it. Hey, you know, uh, we just figured it's going to be a dog-eat-dog -dog track down through there, and uh, I'm just glad the Firestone's hooked up for me in between and settled down real nice. We're at the Trailmaster. We're running a new MSD crank trigger on here, and it seems like it's giving me all the power, and all I can do is just handle the truck. Well, our congratulations to Gene Patterson, his third win in this uh, Penda Jamboree series. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond P Sports. Want to walk away with a free Diamond P hat? Well, now you can do just that when you buy and they walked away three. Diamond P's latest helmet-hammering, bone-jarring thrill ride featuring motorsports' most perilous moments. By calling 1-800-257-9191, you get the free Diamond P hat and 70 minutes of heart-stopping action. Stock cars tangle and tumble on the oval high banks. Drag racers experience terrifying infernos. Sprint cars dance too close and pay the consequences. Mud racers, monster trucks, and motorcycles explode in awesome displays of men and metal turn to mayhem. And in each breathtaking incident, the driver beats the odds. To get your copy of And They Walked Away 3 plus a free Diamond B hat, call 1-800-257-9191 for credit card orders or send check or money order for $24.95 plus $4 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. That's 1-800-257-9191.